Hello, my name is Cyclone Soz and we are tracking its tropical cyclone Balal, which is barreling towards Reunion and Mauritius at this time. You can see the cyclone on the latest radar imagery right now. The inner eye walls just starting to come onto radar imagery right now. We're going to be getting through the detailed forecast for this cyclone over the coming couple of days as it blasts through Reunion and Mauritius and then take a look at the long-term forecast because it is expected to come back for round two, kind of like a Hikanthi scenario that we had, I believe, in 2006. So, or well, I believe actually it was 19. I got my years a little bit muddled up then, but we've got quite a lot to get through, a lot of detail to get through and break down in this forecast update. So make sure you stick around at the end. And if you do end up enjoying it, please do consider subscribing. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please do uh, leave a like on the video and comment down below um, some feedback or so forth. So yeah, we've got a lot to get through in this forecast update. If you do end up enjoying this video, please do consider leaving a like. And if you really like it and want to see more like this, then please do consider subscribing because it does help us out. But we're taking a look at uh, Bilal right now. On the satellite imagery, you can see it is looking pretty mean, that's for sure. It's got some very nice convective banding features starting to wrap around into the center of the cyclone. If we switch it over to the visible imagery, actually, and take a look at a two-hour loop on this cyclone, you can really see the rotation that this cyclone is starting to get right now. And an eye-like feature becoming really defined around the center of the system right about here as some very deep convection starts to tower around and you can see very solid outflow towards the north of the system and also down towards the southern side of the system with a very nice banding feature starting to stretch across from Mauritius through Reunion. There's a lot of rainfall uh, in the bands of this tropical cyclone. It's looking mean, that's for sure. Um, forecast models are daring to predict that this cyclone could get to Category 3 or Category 4 status. However, I'm a little bit uneasy with that forecast. I'd say Category 2, high-end Category 2 as it gets past Reunion and Mauritius is most likely considering it does look like on the latest microwave and radar imagery it could start an eye wall replacement cycle fairly soon so we'll be watching out for that quite closely because that will have, play a big part in determining how strong the winds will actually be on Reunion and Mauritius as this cyclone passes through and those winds are what we're going to be taking a look at right now so you can see current wind observations right now um, on uh, what's that, St. Stennis, I believe, the Reunion capital. Uh, winds right now from the south, 10 knots, and on Mauritius, they're from the northeast at 12 knots. So it's not full-blown cyclone conditions yet, and it's not going to be full-blown cyclone conditions for a while now. The GFS um, is the model that I'm going to be using for this forecast update is because of it, it because of its good model initialization. You can see the rapid intensification basically stops Monday midday, and the storm seems to go through an under uh, an eye an eye wall replacement cycle rather as it makes a landfall on reunion you can see pressure of 980 millibars it's not exactly a very strong tropical cyclone but it's still at least a category one or category two so you're approaching intense tropical cyclone realm there and it delivers those cyclone conditions as you can see in red to mauritius now the gfs generally gets wind speed quite wrong on basically every tropical cyclone that it does so if we're to initialize this with winds of say 50 knots because it's a nice easy number and the winds are actually 75 knots in the tropical cyclone right now what i like to do to get an accurate picture is to add that difference which is 25 knots so if i was to add 25 knots to the forecast for when this cyclone moves through reunion to the maximum winds around the cyclone you're looking at 70 to 75 um, knots uh, maximum winds from a tropical cyclone below. So it's still probably only a category one, maybe a very low end category two strength system on the Sapphire Simpson scale. It's not exactly a record breaking cyclone in terms of strength, but what is interesting is the fact that it makes that direct landfall on Reunion. It is very, very rare that you see cyclones do that, let me tell you, because Reunion is, let's face it, an absolute needle in a haystack for a cyclone to hit in the Southwest Union Ocean. And a similar story with Mauritius. Now you can see Tuesday and into Wednesday, the cyclone pulls away from Mauritius and Reunion, and it no longer affects those areas um, uh, too directly until, uh, I guess, we get a couple more uh, days in advance. So Wednesday and into Thursday, it moves into, well, south of Rodriguez, actually, and as it moves south of Rodriguez, it starts to stall a little bit, and this is when we see the cyclone either strengthen dramatically or weaken dramatically. The models are still a little bit uncertain on that. The ECMWF calls for a lot of strengthening on, um, over the course of Friday and into Saturday and into next weekend and then into early next week. However, the GFS kind of calls for the cyclone to hold its intensity Saturday and Sunday before, get this, it doubles back Monday and Tuesday and it goes in for round two on Mauritius 
as a category two strength cyclone. So again, a very similar story in a week's time. We're actually in about nine days time as the cyclone moves north of Mauritius. And um, it looks like it then starts to head towards Madagascar at that point. I believe if you were to go out to about the 14 day forecast, the cyclone actually does head off for Madagascar and makes a landfall there. Now this is very long range and it's still very speculative considering it is only just a forecast from these computer generated forecast models. So there's still a lot out there that could happen um, in terms of changes for this tropical cycling. You can see the European model, the ECMWF model, doesn't call for any impacts beyond sort of Wednesday or Thursday on Mauritius or Reunion, uh, but it does call for a significant impact on Rodriguez by the looks of things, um, which is a pretty similar story to what the GFS actually predicts. So um, the key points to take away from that is there is a good chance that the cyclone doubles back and goes to Mauritius, but we'll need to know, or we'll need to get to about Thursday or Friday to really get a good idea of how likely that is as a forecast. But it's either way, it's going to take a very higgledy piggledy track throughout the South Coast Union Ocean, as you can see on the wind accumulation. And it's quite an uncertain future for this tropical cyclone, um, at least beyond sort of five days, that's for sure. It's quite rare for South Coast Union Ocean cyclones actually to have such an uncertain forecast. Normally, those storms do have places to be unless they get themselves caught in the Mozambique Channel where the steering currents are a little bit weaker and then they can struggle to find their own path. Now, as I did mention at the start of the video, these banding features that are wrapping into this tropical cyclone contain pretty strong thunderstorms, very strong thunderstorms actually, and they are delivering quite a lot of rainfall right now to Reunion and Mauritius. In fact, there are places on Reunion that are expecting uh, rainfall totals over the next couple or day or two to be uh, sustained at around the 25 millimeters an hour for days at a time. So this is where we're gonna be seeing some pretty incredible rainfall totals, especially on the northern side of Reunion and on the uh, eastern side of Reunion. That's where we're gonna see these really big rainfall totals materialize out of this tropical cyclone, out of Cyclone Below. And it will be a similar story on um, Mauritius as well. We're going to be seeing some pretty good rainfall totals there, but the main uh, rainfall event will happen on Reunion, where there will be places that pick up in excess of 500 millimeters of rain, and maybe even one or two locations that get towards 750 or 1,000 millimeters of rain. So you're talking at least 20 inches for quite a few locations, and then maybe 30 to 35 inches for a couple more locations. On Mauritius, it's a slight Slightly better story in terms of rainfall. You're looking at most places on Mauritius picking up at least eight inches of rainfall, but then there could be one or two spots that pick up up to 10 or maybe even 12 inches of rainfall. So um, we will be watching out for that as well because this could cause some pretty devastating flash flooding um, and some, in fact, life-threatening riverine flooding as well in some of the river catchments on those two islands um, as this cyclone makes its passage through. But again, Reunion is absolutely no stranger to intense rainfall from tropical cyclones. Basically, every cyclone that passes by dumps an exorbitant amount of rainfall on the island. And it's a pretty similar story to Mauritius as well. Considering their um, mountainous elevation and so forth, they can get some pretty nasty um, rainfall totals as a result of tropical cyclones. And in fact, we will just take a look at the cyclone forecast now. Uh, there it is. You can see for Bilal, we're expecting it to move through um, if we were to take a look at the ECMLBF model, or actually we'll take a look at the official model, I believe, um, you can see as it moves through, we're expecting it to either hold intensity or maybe very slightly weaken considering it's possible I will replacement cycle. And it looks like Reunion is now the very likely landfall point for this tropical cycle. And it's basically set in stone at this point, considering there's a lot of model support from uh, most major forecast models calling for that said reunion landfall, which we'll be watching quite closely because it is looking in, yeah, very, very likely at this point that reunion gets that direct hit from the tropical cyclone. You can also see on the track forecast just how much uncertainty there is. I mean, uh, the cone of uncertainty for this cyclone as per the Eastern Earth model is just ginormous. I've never seen a cone of uncertainty this big before. You're talking probably the size of, well, a couple of Texas's at least. It's way bigger than Madagascar. It's dramatically bigger than Madagascar actually. Um, and if you were to zoom out and compare that to Australia, you're probably looking at Western Australia as a state uh, as a fair comparison to the cone of uncertainty for this tropical cyclone, which basically means the center of circulation in the next 10 days could move anywhere between this shaded area with the dotted lines bordering it. So very, very uncertain at this time. And I can't em emphasize that enough is there is still that chance that this cyclone comes back for round two for Mauritius because it is a concerning scenario. And you bet on the Cyclone Source channel, we'll be tracking it very, very closely. We'll be watching it like a hawk. So make sure you are subscribed and leave a like on the video while you're at it. And on that note, I'm gonna end things here. Thank you so much for watching. It's been great having your company and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.